Aloha and welcome to our video on tools for studying space. In this video we'll explain how refracting, reflecting, and radio telescopes work and we'll end with a discussion on the advantages that a space-based telescope has over Earth-based telescopes. So the first type of telescope we're going to look at is a refracting telescope and these type of telescopes use a lens. And what a lens does is it bends or refracts the light. So if you see in our picture we have light coming in through the opening here it's going to hit the lens and it will be bent to this focus here. So you can see the light waves coming in, they hit the lens, they're kind of bent here, they're going to pass through a little bit further, and then we have an eyepiece lens down here to kind of straighten them out so that our eyes can see it. Now, while a refracting telescope is relatively easy to make, you just need to have two lenses and a tube that you can adjust for focusing, and this is the type of telescope that Galileo used, it does suffer from some problems. Um, getting to be a really large aperture opening here means you have to have a relatively large lens and those can cost quite a bit of money. The other problem is, is if you notice, we're coming in here with our waves of light, they're gonna bend and the different wavelengths will bend differently. So we get a problem called chromatic aberration, which means sometimes you'll get a blue halo around the object that you're looking at. So. Refracting telescopes are easy, they're simple to use, um, they don't suffer from a lot of problems, but this is one of the earlier telescopes that they did use, and this is what Galileo used to look at Jupiter and see the Galilean moons. The second type of telescope is a reflecting telescope, and these telescopes use mirrors. And what the mirrors do is they reflect the light as opposed to refract it like a lens. So what we'll notice is we have three different types here. We have a prime method of a reflecting telescope and that's where you'll have a really large opening here, a large aperture. And that's going to allow this light to come down. It's going to bounce off of a mirror up to here and then this is where we have our observation. So we actually do have some reflecting telescopes where you'll sit in a cage inside the telescope and you'll be able to see the images projected off the mirror that way. We can also have a Cassegrain model. The Cassegrain model will have the light come in off of a big mirror at the bottom. It'll bounce up to another mirror and then they'll send it down through the middle. And a lot of times you'll have an eyepiece here and you can have a lens for slight magnification and focusing there. The other type is a Newtonian one and a Newtonian one again is going to have a lot of light come in this way. It's going to bounce up to a secondary mirror here and then it'll shoot it out the side here and this is where you'll have your eyepiece and lens so that you can do your focusing. And you might wonder about putting an object here in the middle of all of these to stop the light coming through. But normally with a reflecting telescope, because the mirrors are cheaper than lenses, you can have a much bigger aperture. And when you're looking at space, you want as big an aperture as you can have so you get the most light coming into your telescopes. Now the third type of telescope is a radio telescope. And a radio telescope takes in radio waves and what that does is it's just like a light telescope but instead of creating an image that we can see with our eyes it's one that we have to interpret so a lot of times we can run it through a computer and generate an image that way or we're looking at the patterns to see what's going on what's really cool about radio telescopes is they can be huge in Puerto Rico there's Arecibo telescope and that one is built in the inside of a volcano so you have an extinct volcano here and what they did is they lined the inside of it so it looks like one of these radio telescopes and they use that basically to look out into space. The problem with that one is it's always faced in the same direction. If you notice these here, they're mounted and these mounts can spin, but also I want you to notice that there's a whole bunch here. And what they do with radio telescopes is they'll set them up in a pattern much like this and by doing that, what you're doing is instead of only having an area this big to catch radio waves, you now have an area this big to catch radio waves. And they can actually hook these up across the planet, and you can actually make a much larger antenna to collect in these rays. So radio telescopes work great. They work during the daytime. They work during bad weather. Um, but again, they don't produce the really high-quality images that people want to look at when they see them. So the best way to get high quality images is you take your telescope and you send it out into space. And the main reason you're going to do this is you want to get rid of the atmospheric distortion. So if you can get it outside of the atmosphere, you don't have to worry about weather, you don't have to worry about day or nighttime, you don't have to worry about smog or clouds or any of those issues in the atmosphere. Basically you've eliminated that problem and that's huge. 
Now, the most famous space telescope that we have is the Hubble Space Telescope, and that's actually a light telescope. So when you see pictures like this, which is the Hubble Deep Sea Field, this is where they're opening it up, and they're actually taking a time-lapse picture out into space. And we'll talk more about this picture a little bit later on in the course. But getting a telescope into space, it's harder to maintain. It's actually hard to get them up and out there and make sure they don't get damaged in the trip. But if you can get one out there, they work really well. We also have telescopes out there that are measuring X-rays and ultraviolet rays. But like we said, the most famous is going to be this one here, the Hubble Telescope. All right, that's it for our video. As always, good luck on the quiz, and we'll see you in the next video.